Here's my take. This week, we watched an unusual spectacle. The foreign minister of Germany, one of the United States' closest allies, went to Tehran and announced that a European payment system designed as an alternative to the dollar would soon be ready. The dollar's dominance in global transactions, which is a huge benefit for America and Americans, will be hard to displace. But this is a warning sign. The canary in the coal mine. America's closest allies are working hard to find ways to undermine a crucial underpinning of American global power. Why? It's simple. The Trump administration's abuse of this power. The United States sits atop the world for now. But there are forces eroding that lofty status. Some of these are deep structural shifts, like the rise of China. But as The Economist points out, others are reactions to a pattern of hegemonic abuse. Consider the trigger for this search for an alternative to the dollar. Britain, France and Germany are all signatories to the Iran deal. The United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. When the Trump administration unilaterally reneged on the pact, even though Iran had abided by it, the U.S. reimposed sanctions using its dollar power to prevent other countries from doing business with Iran, since most international transactions do use the dollar for convenience. Furious at this misuse of authority, the Europeans have set about trying to create a new payment system. So far, these efforts have been ineffective. But if major trading nations set out to subvert the dollar, eventually they will surely have some impact. Or look at the way the Trump administration has been wielding the threat of tariffs. In many cases, the administration has invoked a national security crisis. Now, the law that allows the president to levy such tariffs was passed during the Cold War to ensure that America could preserve critical industries to sustain the geopolitical contest with the Soviet Union. Canadian aluminum and Japanese-made SUVs don't fit the bill. As Jennifer Hillman, the former general counsel to the U.S. Trade Representative, wrote, if the United States can justify tariffs on cars as a threat to national security, then every country in the world can most likely justify restrictions on almost any product under a similar claim. The United States has legitimate complaints about China's trade practices, Beijing will often follow the letter of the law but find clever ways to undermine its spirit through loopholes and exceptions. But that is, of course, precisely what the Trump administration is now doing. By cynically misusing the national security exemption, it is weakening the very trade rules and international laws that it is asking China to follow. America still occupies a unique position in the world. But it is clear we are moving into an era in which more players will have more power. 20 years ago, China was 3% of global GDP. Today, it is 15% and rising. In such a period, it is all the more important that Washington act with restraint, use international institutions, and try to establish global consensus. As I write in the current issue of Foreign Affairs, the rule for extending liberal hegemony seems simple be more liberal and less hegemonic. The Trump administration seems intent on doing the opposite. The administration is acting to get some short-term gains in limited transactions with other countries. But in doing so through the misuse of its power, it is putting at risk the entire structure of the international system in which American power is so deeply embedded. It's a bad trade and one which all Americans will pay the price for in decades to come.